Welcome back to Primetime News. And a special welcome to those of you watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Up first, the long-awaited job descriptions for cabinet ministers and members of parliament have been tabled in the House of Representatives. Prime Minister Andrew Holness tabled the documents late this evening and announced that a joint select committee will be refining the job description for MPs. Now it comes in response to public backlash due to the massive salary hike to the political directorate. We have more in this report. The nine page job description for government ministers outlined a number of requirements and deliverables. Ministers have 25 main areas of responsibility. They include attending cabinet meetings, coordinating and providing policy and strategic leadership of their portfolios. Cabinet ministers also have to get feedback from experts on areas within their portfolios and provide reports to parliament pilot legislation and carry out any other duties assigned by the Prime Minister. Minimum qualifications and experience for the job. Qualified according to the laws of Jamaica to be appointed to the House or Senate. Cabinet ministers must also understand government, the laws of Jamaica, engage in critical thinking, have the ability to mediate disputes, and a strong conviction to principles of good governance. There was no stipulated time period for experience, just a period of progressive experience gained through advocacy, political or professional affiliation, community involvement, voluntary sector or business experience. As for the working conditions, government ministers are expected to travel, work long hours, be away from family for an extended period, always be on call, have high levels of stress and be subject to verbal abuse and threats. The parliament through its joint select committee will be invited to note the approved job description for ministers and further develop and refine the job description for members of parliament. The committee will also be asked to establish a reporting and accountability framework for members to include standard periodic reports to Parliament on the work of MPs in their constituencies, the use of public resources such as the CDF, and the engagements that the MPs have with constituents. The attendance and participation of members in the House and committees will also be tracked and actioned and action determined for absences beyond a set threshold. So, Madam Speaker. Now, the Integrity Commission and government ministers have been at loggerheads about the signing of a code of conduct. The Prime Minister indicated Jamaica was invited to accept seven principles of a public life based on the UK's Nolan Committee report selflessness, integrity, objectivity, accountability, openness, honesty, and leadership. Those same principles make up the Integrity Commission's code, and so Mr. Holness made this comment. Every minister in the cabinet is bounded by the code of conduct in Ministry Paper 19-2002. So I want that point, Madam Speaker, to be cemented. The cabinet is not without a code of conduct. There is a code of conduct that has existed for 20 years, which members on that side, when they were in the cabinet, were also bounded by. 